everyone welcome to my channel on this super hot day it's like over 30 degrees celsius right now it's so hot that i'm actually wearing white i don't wear white in the summertime because it sort of like fades in with my polar bear colored skin so can you even see where my skin starts and ends compared to the shirt i'm wearing it's like that's why i don't wear white anyways it's helping out with the hot sun so today i have this toothpick drone from beta fpv this is a long range toothpick drone and it is called the hx115 Five. Now, this is the first drone I have reviewed that has the Express LRS system in it. So Express LRS is the new system. It's open source. It's on the market. It's going to be everywhere in the near future. It is basically like Crossfire. Crossfire, we use it for long range to fly far, far. So this is an open source system that is similar to Crossfire and it's called Express LRS. You're going to hear that so many times in the future because so many drones are going to have it. So basically it is very inexpensive. Yeah, so Crossfire, you have to pay a premium for that receiver and all the technology. But since this is open source, there's a bunch of guys like me, a lot more techie than me, obviously, that have designed this and come up with it. And Beta FPV just took all their technology and schematics and put them into a circuitry, uh, just like other companies have. And yeah, and then so they don't have to do any R&D work. It's already done for them. So there's no cost. So you can get these little receivers and these little drones dirt cheap with, that are long range that can go like, oh, I don't know, 35 kilometers out I'm serious I would never fly this 35 kilometers out because it doesn't have the battery power but they can actually do that with Express LRS now take a close look at this drone on the top I have an insta 360 go camera I stuck that there because all I have to show you video is from this little cadex ant camera at the front and it's you know it's gonna be pretty basic because I got to record it and where are they I got to record it in my fat sharks because this is totally analog it's not digital and my fat sharks when video is recorded inside uh, it's not that great other things to tell you about this really quick is it has an F4 flight controller. It has, what are the motors? They're huge, 1102, 18,000 kV motors. The bigger the number, when you hear me talk about kV, it just means they're gonna spin faster for the amount of voltage I'm putting through them. This little antenna on the back will shoot out the video signal back to my fat sharks at 350 milliwatts. Uh, now that I just said it, did I even set it to 350? Hmm, I don't know. I'm not gonna fly too far, so that's okay. It is a carbon fiber design, so it's quite durable. You know, it's just one of these tiny, tiny little drones that's on the market, toothpick style, that's what they call it because it's long like a toothpick. It's one of these drones that a lot of people like to buzz around. The benefit is this one's long range. There's not a lot of long range toothpick or tiny little drones on the market. So this can go really far. The problem is it's only got this little 450 milliamp hour one cell battery, which is not gonna get it going very far before it runs out of power. I think the specs say you could probably get five minutes on this flying it with no little extra weight on top. So when they say five minutes, that's conservative. So for a guy like me, it'd probably be four minutes with the extra weight of this camera on top, I'll probably get three minutes or less. So now for everyone that's paying attention i said this was an express lrs drone that means inside the receiver's express lrs so that means i need a radio to fly it that's express lrs so remember this baby this is the jumper t light very inexpensive well it can actually take an express lrs module on the back that's the beta fpv express lrs module and it's dirt cheap it's like under 50 dollars. i think it's like 40 dollars. now they do come in different versions they come in like at a 2.4 gigahertz a 900 and i don't know 15 gigahertz and then 800 and something gigahertz for different areas of the world some people think the 900 will get you a farther range than the uh, the 2.4 I think that's a 2.4 it says it on the bottom yeah it says down here 2.4 so some people think that the 900 will shoot out farther than the 2.4 certainly you want to change this antenna this here comes with two antennas uh, one looks like a directional antenna it's a big uh, band top uh, like an ovally type thing on the top I'll show you a picture of it and it comes with this antenna as well since I'm not flying very far I have just this antenna on and it's pretty simple you just attach the whole thing to the rear of your controller and that's it all right enough this i'm gonna go fly this here we go all right first thing we have to do is power this on Welcome to there we go make sure the throttle's down the switch is all back and we are set to go next thing we do is simply plug in the battery in the back and there we go it's all set to go let me make sure it's going to work i'm going to hit the arm switch here these motors should spin there we are we are set to fly all right fat sharks on there's nobody around let's put it in acro mode Angle mode, acro mode. There we go, arm it. Arm motors. And let's fly. This is flying with the little Insta360 on it. I'll bring it back so you can see me. 
There I am right there. And it's a little windy out today, but this is nice. So I can go around my little Jeep here. I'm behind the Jeep. Well, I will say right off the bat, with the extra weight of the Insta360 Go on it, it's very smooth. Very smooth indeed. I thought it would be like uh, too heavy of a drone and have issues with the flight dynamics, but now it's very smooth. Go up here, go up here. I'm behind. Let's take it up a bit. Let's go this way over our little... Whoa, that was close to the fan. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. All right, let's bring it back this way. And uh, yeah, there's nothing to show you out here. I'm sort of flying in an area where there's not much around of anything. There's a bunch of cars over here in the parking lot because there's a cricket game going on. So I'm just gonna go around this sign and come back this way. And going over here, going over here, whoa. So for signal range, no problem. I can see it in my screen and it looks A-OK. -okay. For video transmission, uh, I do have a little bit of interference with the 350 because of look where I'm standing. And when I go behind trees and stuff like that, you get a little bit of video interference. So I will tell you right now, because it's hot out, I'm not gonna fly for very long, but uh, the uh, this here drone flies so smooth. So I'm just gonna go up and, oh, see, I'm getting a low battery already with all the weight when I went up. So let me just try flipping it. Yeah, no problem there. Let's try flipping it the other way as I come down. Oh, low battery! Is it gonna survive? Whoa, it survived. I have a low battery flashing on the screen as I bring it out. So it's gonna crash any second around here because it's coming up. It's gonna be low on power. So I gotta bring it back. Oh, low battery went away. All right, I can fly for a little bit more. It was just because I was flying kind of aggressive. All right, there's gotta be a short flight because I just got a warning that my transmitter battery here is actually low. So it's running out of power, which means this radio in my hands is running out of power. So uh, if that goes out, well, this thing's just gonna fall out of the sky. So I have to be careful. All right, so let me just take it up. I'm getting the low battery again. I just wanna see how high I can get it without killing the battery. There we are. So now you can see the world. There we are. And do a nice slow rotation as we come down. I'm coming down super fast in a dive and bring it up. Oh yeah, it's got lots of power for that. All right. Okay, let's bring it on back before my transmitter dies. I'll have to go and uh, make sure I put a good battery in this transmitter next time. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> we're coming in, we're hot and heavy, we're coming in. Here we go. It's gonna, whoa, <laughs> almost hit my Jeep. I, I know, I know, I know. I'm bringing it back, I'm bringing it back. I just gotta slow it down so I don't kill the Insta360 camera. All right, here we go. I was gonna slide it like this. This is a slide. Transmitter battery low. Whoa. Lost. Yep, that did it. One thing to note, when you put- Transmitter battery low. Yeah, I know. When you put the Express LRS uh, module on the back, it has to get power to function and it uses a lot of power and it takes it out of my little 18650 battery that's in this controller. So always make sure you fully charge it. Mine was not fully charged. I think I, I left home with like half power. Normally that's okay, but it, it drained it flying out here. So make sure you put a fully charged battery or else this here will run out of power and your drone will fall out of the sky. All right, next thing I want to show you is what comes in the box for the drone itself, the toothpick drone, as well as the Express LRS unit that I had on the back of my radio. Check this out. This is the box your drone comes in and inside the box you'll find the HX115. It is a nice looking drone, lots of carbon fiber which makes it really great and it is very light. Take note of the battery connector in case you want to buy additional batteries. It does come with two 450 milliamp hour batteries with a battery charger which also doubles as a battery tester. Total takeoff weight of the drone is 57 grams. A spare set of props are included. And now let's take a look at the Express LRS transmitter. You can see by the box that it does come in different versions. Mine is the 2.4 gigahertz version and this is what I received in my box. It is compatible with various radios as long as you have this connector on the back of your radio. If you are using OpenTX, just go into your system menu, select tools, and then go down to ELRS, Express LRS, and then enter, and you will have access to the transmitter on the back of your radio, and you'll know it's working because the light will start to glow a certain color. You can then select the bind selection and bind it to your drone. All right, so you saw from the unboxing how you bind this whole thing together with the transmitter and the receiver. It is a little bit different than you're probably used to, but as soon as you get into that, life is good. There is software as well called uh, Express LRS Configurator that can update everything on here and update everything on here and also do the binding much simpler, but that's one more step where you're gonna have to use your laptop. So final thoughts on this. It's a fun little drone to fly around. The only thing is I always have to use this when I wanna fly it. In the future, 
all the tiny drones and a lot of the drones on the market are going to have just this type uh, transmitter because it's so inexpensive that a lot of companies are going to adopt it so if you jump in now you're ahead of the game so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put links below where you can find this baby check the links below and also this baby here check the links below and see if this is for you if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions on this or the little guy drone here uh just post them below and i'll get back to you thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye